Hey, I want to discuss speaking on our own authority or having our own opinions as to what is true or what is right or wrong and what the dangers of doing so are. A common way of thinking by people today is here is what I think with no regard for what is true and no fear for, of being in disagreement with the truth. This is applied to the word of Elohim as well. People might say, here's what I think this verse says. Or maybe they might even be bolder and say, here's what this verse is saying. A common response from people um, is, well, that is your in, 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 um, interpretation. We need to make sure who our source is for all things and for all of our speech. I don't think that many would disagree um, with the statement that we should be imitators of Yeshua. Therefore, since it's almost unanimously agree, at least agreed, at least verbally, that we should seek to imitate him, we should seriously consider his statements. In John 5, we read him saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son of Man can do nothing of himself but what the Father seek do, but what he sees the Father do. For what things that he does, these also the Son does likewise. For the Father loves the Son, and he shows him all things that he does. And he will show him greater works than these, that, that you may marvel. Wow. How do we receive this kind of instruction? It is in the blueprint. We must simply follow the blueprint as Yeshua did. It is the word of Elohim. Yeshua became that word. Here's another quote from our Messiah. When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you shall know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. All that we would seek to, to be in agreement with that and have the same source for our instructions. And he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, because I do always those things that please him. I hope you understand this. Elohim lived in Yeshua and taught him what to say and what to do, because he did what pleased him. At least this, according to the words of Yeshua. Yesterday I had some Jehovah's Witnesses come to the door with a translator to tell me how it is in the world according to what the Watchtower says is true. I made an attempt to explain to them that scripture teaches that the whole world would be deceived by Satan and that that included me and would also include the Jehovah's Witnesses. The reason that I bring this up is that during our conversation and after they left, I was marveling at the selective hearing that they were able to clothe themselves with. This selective hearing is what I call willful ignorance. Many have the common response, well, that is your interpretation. What differentiates um, a conversation from being true versus being from our own understanding of right from wrong or our own interpretation? I have had, um, I've said in several segments that Yahweh is not interested in what you or I think is true. He is only concerned with that we choose what he says is true. These Jehovah's Witnesses were very sincere and they believe um, what they want to tell you is true. They believe with all their heart that they are doing the will of Yahweh. A devout Muslim is sincere, and they believe that they are doing our Creator's will as well when he or she straps on bombs to kill people. A Catholic priest is sincere um, that they think that they are in tight with their Creator, even though they might molest little boys. A good old boy, Southern Baptist, held fire and brimstone preacher is sincere that he represents the truth, just as my own family members are sincere that they're walking in the truth. I could go on. A Buddhist is sincere. A, a Russian or Greek Orthodox is sincere. They are all sincere. It is just that they are sincerely wrong. The common reply to this statement, wait just a minute there, dude. How do you know that you're not sincerely wrong? Maybe you're the one that is wrong. Well, I can guarantee you that the only way that any of us can be correct is if we have Elohim Spirit guiding us. But all of these groups believe that they have their, their God's Spirit guiding them, and they do. They just do not understand who their God is. He is the ruler of this era of time. It might be then asked to me, well, Michael, how do you know that this ruler is not guiding you as well? Maybe you are the one listening to him. Well, this is another good question, and each of us must openly examine um, ourselves with this question. What is the, the description of this temporary ruler of this error that, um, that has been given power to broadcast? Yeshua says in John 8, you are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own. For he is the liar and the father of it. So he, he doesn't believe the truth. They didn't believe the truth. Because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Well, Yeshua gives them an earful here. But, but what is the truth that these highly religious men were not abiding in? They certainly thought that they had the truth and that they were abiding in it. It is the word of Elohim. This is what Yeshua teaches us is the truth. He became this word and represented it to perfection. Did these men, and maybe there's some women there among them too, um, that day, 
keep some of the commandments? Well, without a doubt. They actually added to them and perverted many of them and made their own religion out of them. Does this mean that the true commandments are not the truth? Is the truth only the spiritual intent of the commandments as many pose in today's religious confusion? No, keeping the commandments on a physical plane is our Creator's blueprint to teach us spiritually His perfect character. We can, can we keep them on a physical plane and not receive um, the spiritual lessons? Well, absolutely. This is what the story of Job reveals. So which of the groups in the world today have the truth? Who has the spirit of Elohim giving them the truth? Well, let's go to the source and find out a description of the group that has the truth. Here is the enduring continuance of the saints. It is they who keep the commandments of Elohim and the faith of Yeshua. So the saints of the Most High are described as those who keep the commandments of Elohim and possess the faith that Yeshua possessed. This brings up two very important points. Do we learn the commandments all at once? Is it just an instantaneous download? And how do we possess the faith that Yeshua possesses? Is it a superior to any kind of faith that we can possess on our own in the flesh without them dwelling in us? Growing in the truth is a process that requires us to believe Elohim. This is what faith is. It is the faith that Yeshua possessed. We must believe Him, and if we truly believe Him, they will manifest themselves through us and teach us all that is true. A simple example that I use to expose people's lack of faith um, in their Creator is, does a person that goes to the doctor believe in His promise to heal them? How, how much of His Spirit can this person real, actually have? I have discussed in other segments um, the seven different spirits of Elohim that Yeshua possessed without measure, and I suggest that you learn what these are if you have not. I want to point out as well uh, that it is by the, um, the spirit, uh, by the power of His Spirit, that we are called. So all who are of the many who are called have experienced at least a level of Elohim Spirit. But is that what is guiding their choices from that point forward, or do they stop coming to the call? This all depends if they are continuing to come to the call or not. Yes, we can have a measure of Elohim spirit and still be wrong about things. Because as long as we're in the flesh, we will have error. But His Spirit checks our error and um, to correct us. If we reject that check, we reject His Spirit and we, and we reject His protection and His continued instructions. If we're not being checked, we are not being guided by His Spirit and we need to repent. The problem is the blind cannot see that they are not being checked. This is why we must need. Uh, this is why we need the ISAF. We must fear being in disagreement with the truth, with every idle word that we that we speak or even think. There is so much to learn about his ways, and the process is incredible. It is an, an adventure. He is patient and merciful to us if we continue to learn. But if we blatantly reject a truth and hold on to a lie, he simply removes his spirit from us and allows us to be sifted by the father of lies. We need to fear having. Um, this be the case with us. The measure of His Spirit that we are given is in direct response and direct proportion to our growth in the truth. So back to yesterday, these people rejected simple statements of Yeshua, like Matthew 5, where He says, Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I have not come to destroy, but to execute it or render it perfect. He magnified the law, just as was prophesied by Isaiah that He would do. For verily I say unto you, until heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, until all be made to be. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least uh, the least commandments, and teach men so, he shall be called or named least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do them and teach them, the same shall be called or named great in the kingdom of heaven. Their beliefs do not reinforce actually uh, Yeshua actually meaning this. Um, therefore they call him a liar by their actions. and. They do not have the spirit of Elohim guiding in them, uh, guiding them and dwelling them in them. People who call Yeshua and His Father liars do not have His spirit. Period. It is our actions that prove whether or not we believe His words. If our actions confess that we do not believe His words, we are inadvertently calling them liars. What are some of the least of the commandments that Yeshua could be referring to here? I've explained in other segments what a couple of these might be, like maybe the ribbons of blue or the fringes that we're commanded to wear or that men are to not destroy the borders of their beards. Most have scoffed at these two commandments, and most of all of the commandments for that matter, and they are commandments. Do you think that Elohim is giving these people His Holy Spirit, people who have no desire to obey His every word? How about someone who's fighting, who is fighting um, to keep most of the commandments on a physical plane and still living in fornication, or continuing to lie, 
or, or even lied to themselves or do they have the Holy Spirit guiding them? Is listening to false teachers or false preachers fornication to our Creator? Is it an adultery to the Most High? Absolutely. To those people, are they guided by His Spirit? Who are the false teachers? They are anyone who does not teach you to live by every word of Elohim. Is the self-proclaiming Apostle Paul false? Absolutely. Your Creator will easily prove this to you if you want to listen to him because Paul contradicted Yeshua and the prophets over and over again. This is a perfect place to use this as an example. As my father was calling me into the truth, I did not see that Paul was false. And yet, I, yet he continued to call me by his spirit because I was acknowledging Paul's errors and he was he was showing me that I'm, and growing and I was growing in the truth. Every time that I came across an erroneous teaching of Paul, I would feel a check in my spirit and would go on to explain what Paul really meant in this verse or that verse. I rationalized his error with the truth that I had been given and just blamed poor translations. My father was patient, but my growth was limited. He was trying to show me that Paul was false, but I was trying to justify him um, because of my preconceived beliefs that, that he was divinely inspired because that is what I grew up believing. Wow, was it freedom to finally acknowledge the truth. The truth sets you free. The same type of thing happens to me all the time as I keep shedding the lies and coming to the truth, most recently in the last couple of days. Once I had um, repented from using the pagan calendar system that many um, use that comes from those who call themselves Jewish today, I found out um, how the weeks were to be determined, so I applied this true calendar to the count for the um, Feast of First Fruits. I was still troubled in my spirit because the result was not 50 days as his word says it would be. It was 53 days in the year that I was figuring. My father did not shut me off from his spirit but gave me time because I was letting him show me other truths and, and I was fighting to be fed by him um, with so many other things and acknowledging to him that I still needed him to teach me on this subject as well because I was, well, God was feeling his check and I was not telling others how to count for this feast yet because I was not sure. I did, I did tell one my thoughts on the subject but I also told him that I was not sure and I needed to study it. I told him I, you know, I, I was confident in the calendar system. I also mentioned a, a date um, in a couple of segments in 2012 that was based on my erroneous count but my father made sure to give me ample time to correct that. When he told me that it was time to set aside um, the other studies and study this subject with his spirit as the guide, Shazam! The truth is beautiful, it's clear cut and it's simple. The point is I was not rejecting what he was giving me nor speaking on my own authority that, that I had the truth on this subject of how to count. I had my thoughts but they were hindered by his check. His spirit was letting me know that I was thinking and what, what I was thinking was not completely true, only part of it so I needed to cry out to him for additional understanding. Once he gave me the truth I was able to speak it to others and I did so yesterday. But it was no longer based on my own understanding. He actually gently held me back from discussing the error as far as how it was counted. He, he did this with that check that he gave me. The dangerous, it is dangerous to speak on our own authority on what we think is right or wrong because we can have to shut ourselves off from his spirit by doing so. Our creator does not force his thoughts on us. We have to want his words on our tongue and, and not our own thoughts to be spoken. We have to want to be in agreement with him and fear otherwise. Otherwise, he gives us over to um, our own counsel. I still started off um, today discussing John 5, where Yeshua says, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do. For what things that he does, these also the Son does alike. This needs to be our hunger, that, we, that he would show us all things. I speak on his authority when I say that he is not going to show all things. If we are going to continue to live lies, he is not looking to have rebellious, stubborn children in his family. He is patient, but we must fight to make sure that we are living a life of repentance, which is change, letting him write his character in our minds and on our hearts. Having eyes to see begins with having our eyes anointed with eye salve. This eye salve is having a fear to be in disagreement with him, a fear to be in disagreement with what he wants to give us this truth.